Did you know that Afghanistan's population is currently growing at a faster rate than China's? Or that countries like Russia and Japan are seeing a population decline? These changes in a country's demographics shape a country more than you probably realize. We can see these different trends and patterns thanks to population pyramid. Today on the Mr. Sin channel, we'll be reviewing Unit 2, Topic 3 of AP Human Geography. As always, if you find value in these videos, consider subscribing and check out my Ultimate Review Packet and Discord server for more help with your AP human geography study. When looking at population pyramids, we can see a breakdown of society's sex and age at a given time. Think about a population pyramid as a snapshot in time, almost as, as someone took a picture of society. Going up on the y-axis, we can see the different age cohorts or ranges. This is often found on the left side of the population pyramid or in the middle, depending on how the pyramid was set up. On the x-axis, we can see the amount of people, which is either shown with an exact number or is presented as a percent. You will also notice that there are two sides to the population pyramid, one for women and one for men. These two bars show the two sexes of a society. Each of the bars is connected to a specific age range and sex. For example, here we can see that India has just under 65 million boys at ages 5 to 9, and at the same time has just over 52 million girls at ages 5 to 9. When looking at population pyramids and focusing on the two sexes, we're able to gain different insight into a society's sex ratio, which is the ratio of males to females males in a population. To find this ratio, you take the number of male births in a society and divide it by the number of female births, then multiply by 100. If the ratio is above 100, it means that there are more male births in society. But if it is less than 100, it means that there is more female births in society. And if it's 100 exactly, it means the births between males and females are the same. Now over time, it's actually common for the sex ratio of a society to become more imbalanced. This is because that men on average die sooner than women. Lastly, you always want to look at the date of the population population pyramid, as this will tell you when the information was collected. For example, here we can see Mongolia's population pyramid from 2016. Today it's 2022, so we know that this data is six years old, which means that the people in each age cohort have now shifted to a new cohort. Alright, so now that we understand some of the basics of these pyramids, let's delve deeper into what these pyramids can really show us about a society. Starting with the different age cohorts, we can see that we have pre-reproductive years, which are 0 to 14 years old. Then there is the reproductive years from 15 to 44 years old. And lastly, the post-reproductive years, which is 45 years and up. Understanding these categories can tell us a lot about the current state of a society and help us predict what might happen in the future. For example, if the majority of our population is currently in the pre-reproductive years or the reproductive years, we can predict that the society's population is going to grow at a much faster rate than a society that has the majority of their population in the post-reproductive years. We can see this when looking at at Afghanistan's population pyramid and China. Notice how a large percentage of Afghanistan's population is near the bottom of the pyramid in the pre-reproductive years and reproductive years. This shows growth in a population and tells us that many people could be having more kids soon. On the other hand, when we look at China's population pyramid, the bottom of the population pyramid is smaller. In fact, we can see that there are more people in their post-reproductive years than there are people in their pre-reproductive years. This tells us that many people are no longer having kids, which indicates a population that is growing at a slower rate or could even start to shrink. Generally, whenever you see a population pyramid with a large base, it means that society has a high growth rate. And whenever you see a population pyramid with a large top, it means the society has a low growth rate or possibly a negative growth rate. And if a population pyramid looks more like a box, it means the society is close to its replacement rate. These societies are not seeing a population boom, but are also not declining. This shows stability in the growth rate of a society and normally indicates that the society is more developed. Now speaking of age cohorts, I also want to point out another ratio that we can use when looking at these pyramids and it's the dependency ratio. This ratio gives us insight into how many people a society has to support. The higher this number is, the greater the burden there will be on the working population. To find this number, you take the number of children between 0 and 14 years old and add the number of people who are 65 years or older. Divide Divide that by the working age of the population and multiply by 100. The reason why we add the people who are between 0 and 14 years old and 65 years or older together is because these people are either not in the workforce yet or have retired and are no longer in the workforce. Now if this number is small, it most likely means that the majority of people are in their working years and society will not need to provide a lot of services for the elderly or young. But if this number is high, it means society will have more services it needs to provide but less tax revenue to fund. 
fund them, since people who are not working pay less in taxes. This ratio can also be broken down into the child dependency ratio and elderly dependency ratio. The child dependency ratio takes the number of people between 0 and 14 years old and divides it by the number of people that are 15 to 64 years old, then multiplies by 100. This gives us insight into how many children need to be supported by society. For example, if this number is high, society might need more schools or daycare facilities. On the other hand, the elderly dependency ratio takes the number of people 65 years and older and divides it by the number of people between the ages of 15 to 64 years old, then multiplies the number by 100. This shows what percentage of the population is retired and needs to be supported. If this number is high, society may need more retirement homes or healthcare facilities. Now, if we change our scale, we gain even more information from these population pyramids. When looking at the national scale, we gain insight into the demographic trends impacting the entire country. National governments can use population pyramids to better understand what demographic trends and patterns are happening within their country's border. For example, countries that are starting to see more of their population pyramid move from the bottom and middle to the top may have to switch some of the government services they provide, start scaling back their daycare and schooling options, and start increasing the amount of retirement homes and healthcare services. They also will have to start to look for more ways to generate tax revenue and figure out how to increase their workforce as more and more people continue to retire. Regional governments can look at their population pyramids to see if their national influence will be impacted by their changing demographics. States that are shrinking might get less federal funding or have less representation in their federal government, such as in the United States, which determines each state's electoral votes off the census, giving states that have a larger population more electoral votes, and states with a smaller population less votes. Or if we change our scale to a local level, we can gain insight into the demographics inside a city, which can be used by businesses to understand the customer base of a city, and if an area will have a workforce for their business. City governments also use population pyramids and demographic data to determine if they need to build new schools, parks, or healthcare facilities for their residents. Depending on a city's demographics, they'll have different priorities, which will shift how they allocate their resources. For example, when looking at this population pyramid of a city, we can see there's a large percentage of the population in the 20 to 24 year range. This could indicate that the city has colleges inside its borders, which means that there is a large student population, which could mean that there's a vibrant downtown and possibly more homes for rent for students. On the other hand, if we look at this population pyramid of a city, we can see there's a larger elderly population, which means that the city may be experiencing brain drain as more young people move to other cities that offer more social and economic opportunity, which could put further strain on the economy as the city has to find new ways to provide for its residents. Fortunately, that's all the time we have for today. If you need more help with population pyramids or AP Human Geography, go check out my ultimate review packet, where you'll find exclusive resources that'll help you understand these concepts even further. But before you do that, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and also answer the review questions on the screen. As always, I'm Mr. Sin. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time online.